Now would be a good time to explore the difference between APT and CAPEM. We have understood the CAPEM model in our previous video. So let's try to contrast uh, these two techniques. So on APT, we use multiple factors for arriving at asset returns. That is, we can have a multi-factor model. So that's actually one of the strengths of the APT. In the CAPM, we have a single factor model. That is, we are using one single risk factor, which we call as the market risk factor. And that is the only thing which we are using in our analysis. So the idea is we are, uh, we are actually an bringing together all of the risk factors into one single risk factor, which we call as the market risk. And that is what we use in the analysis of CAPM. Now, from the practical calculation perspective, uh, arbitrage pricing theory is much more efficient because yes, uh, from a theoretical perspective, yes, it is very sophisticated. However, even from a practical implementation perspective, which is equally important because finally, whatever things we study in theory, that has to be converted into a workable model. And through the arbitrage pricing theory, uh, we can actually make our calculations far more efficient and faster. So let's take a simple example. Now, whenever we have to do a complete analysis of a certain portfolio, uh, we need to take into consideration the correlations and covariance which exists across various assets. So the number of variance calculations are three, assuming a three factor portfolio here. And the number of covariance calculations, it will be 3 square minus 3 by 2. So the general formulas for this are the number of variances are n and the number of covariance calculations are n square minus n by 2. So I have just replaced the n by 3 in this example. So if I want to know the total number of calculations, they are merely 3 plus 3. So the first 3 is from the variance calculations and the next 3 is from the covariance calculations. So all that I have to calculate is six calculations. So that way it's not a very heavy load on the system, isn't it? So let's try to compare this with CAPM. So with CAPM, the overall implementation becomes tedious because the complexity of the calculation is going to go on increasing as the number of portfolio assets go on increasing. So let's say I'm looking at a hundred asset portfolio then the number of variance calculations are 100. So the same logic as earlier, n number of variances and the number of covariances, this is going to be significant because following the logic of n square minus n by two and plugging in 100 in place of n and I solve this, total number of calculations go to 5050. So here we see a big jump in APT. We have to look at only six calculations, whereas for a CAPM, we have 5050 calculations. <coughs> So this is the jump in the number of calculations, which is going to make the overall calculation process very, very tedious, which can be problematic from a practical implementation perspective. So that's why uh, APT we assume to be more efficient from the actual computation perspective. Also through APT, we can have a better exploration of security returns because under the APT equation, we know that we can actually break down the component of portfolio return into various small parts, which can be various risk factors, which our portfolio ha has bordered for tracking purposes. So that way, actually having a, this gives us a better idea as to which components are contributing how much. So that gives a far granular, granular view into the way in which the portfolio returns are generated and something which is very useful for any portfolio manager. Now, explanatory power for CAPM is comparatively weaker because we are actually enveloping all of our risk factors into one single risk factor, which we call as beta. So by bundling all of these risk factors together, we are unable to actually uh, have a better explanatory power because that way we cannot actually slice and dice, dice this particular return into various specific components. So that, that is considered as a uh, weakness for CAPM. That is the explanatory power for CAPM drops because all that we are talking about is the market portfolio or beta and nothing else. Also from a risk management perspective, it is uh, APT is considered to be more efficient because it gives us the power to analyze individual risk factors. Uh, and again, from a risk management perspective, it is important. Because if the portfolio manager knows as to the kind of sensitivity the, which the portfolio has on various risk factors, that is far more advantageous because accordingly, the portfolio manager can take positions 
so that the specific risk factors get addressed and they are managed in an efficient manner. So that way, risk management becomes far more comfortable for the risk uh, for the portfolio manager. Now, in CAPM, beta is the only risk which is considered. So if we are to do a drill down on other specific risk factors which are impacting our portfolio returns, that becomes difficult. So that can be considered as a weakness also from a risk management standpoint for CAPM. 